children's health was a big one. Oral yeah. health, cavity oh, yeah. um, was, was one. And actually since, even since publishing my book, there's been a lot of really interesting information coming about vitamin K2 and psoriasis, which I didn't write about, but I, I found that the results were so great that I, I try to mention that. Um, but yeah, the cancer thing was, I was huge. I was astonished. That's the original research I found around vitamin K2 was for cancer, various types of cancer. And since the publication of the book, more research showing uh, really important results for prostate cancer and prostate health for men in general. Okay, thank you. Um, this is really interesting. Discuss vitamin K2's role in normal facial development. Mm, yeah. um, you know. This was so interesting to me, yeah. and I think the pictures in the book uh, do say a thousand words here. And it is a lot based on the work of Weston Price, who uh, did a lot of the radiographs and, and, and provided a lot of these pictures. But then we since have more modern evidence to corroborate those findings in terms of vitamin K2 defici deficiency and its role in facial development, specifically helping to promote the development of a wide face that's um, symmetrical uh, with a, like a long straight nose and, and typically the, the width of the face is important. What I think is interesting, so when I wrote the book, my understanding of the time based on the information I'd seen was a, a big factor in this and it still is for facial width and development of teeth happens in the womb in utero, so K2 is important then. But because the face does continue to grow until you know, 18, 19, 20 even, I think there is now, I, I do believe that there's an opportunity for kids who are taking K2 and have K2 in their diets throughout life to make up for deficiencies at that time and, and end up with a nice wide face, which can mean avoiding braces, for example, these kinds of things. So it's very hopeful.